Hello and welcome to a very romantic Valentine's Day edition of One on One Sports. We have so much to catch up on, including the Super Bowl, so cuddle up with someone you love and brace yourself for 30 minutes of passion. Passionate sports debate, that is. <laughs> Love is in the air and Valentine's Day is upon us. Funny thing is though, sports are still all we can think about. This is One on One Sports, I'm Andrew Springs. And I'm Mike Feldman. This may be a week for romance, but right now there are a lot of broken hearts in Indianapolis. The New Orleans Saints upset the Colts in Super Bowl 44 by a score of 31 to 17, sealing the win with a fourth quarter pick six by Tracy Porter. Springs, what was the highlight of the game? What play, player, or even commercial stole well, it for you? Let's, let's be honest, the first half was kind of eh, kind of blah. So I'd say the opening play of the second half, the onside kick by Sean Payton, uh, definitely not only the pivotal play of the game, but the best play of the game, the highlight of the game. Yeah, Thomas Moore said the, the punter for the Saints actually was the one that had the onside kick, and he had not practiced an onside kick in his life until two weeks ago. So he goes out there kicking minimal onside kicks, they get it, and then ride the momentum to the victory. The first onside kick attempted uh, before the fourth quarter in a Super Bowl, and it was recovered by the Saints. I was impressed. I was like, okay, first of all, you're trying to catch him off guard. I get that. But at the same time, to actually execute and recover the ball, impressive. Sean Payton willing, willing to take the risks, and his team won the game. He comes out as a hero for great call. And then I also enjoyed the, uh, the Tracy Porter pick six to show people that, you know, Peyton Manning is a 9-9 nine nine playoff quarterback, and his win was against the Chicago Bears, one of the worst teams to make the Super Bowl ever. Yes, quarterback by Rex Grossman, of all people. <sighs> Moving from the gridiron to the hardwood, there is talk of expanding the NCAA men's basketball tournament from 64 to 96 teams. Now, given the success of the tournament as it is now, do you think this is a good idea or a bad idea? I love the NCAA men's basketball tournament, and I'll watch the playing game, the, the 65th team, but... I only watch it because I'm just so jazzed up about what's to come. I don't think they need to expand it to 96 teams. I like it the way it is. Even we'll go 65 versus 64, but I'm a traditionalist. I like it the way it is. I agree, but, but for different reasons. I cut class the first Thursday and Friday of the NCAA tournament because I love it so much. And what we're missing here is expanding the tournament is not the, is not the issue. These, these teams already get chances to make noise in their own conference tournaments. That's what championship, is, championship week is about. It's about Morgan State, that 10-13 uh, team from the MEAC, being able to go to the tournament and, as a 15 or a 14 seed, or Oakland or, or Oakland or Oral Roberts from the Summit Conference. These teams have an opportunity. It's in their conference tournaments. If they win their conference tournaments, then hey, you're in the NCAA tournament. If not, sorry, better luck next year. Expanding the tournament, not the way, not the way to go. It is fine the way it is, and I'm not gonna lie, I think it, it would get a little bit long. Five Which, weeks? Yeah, it would be like five a, weekends an extra of couple days. Basketball? I mean, just yeah, narrowing it down from that. I mean, half the team's playing basically a playing game now. I, I like it the way it is. It would we'll take up all like of that. March. Between his poor performance in the Senior Bowl and the controversy surrounding his anti abortion Super Bowl ad, former Heisman Trophy winner Tim Tebow has had a very tough week. How much will his struggles in the Senior Bowl hurt his NFL draft chances? Well, first of all, his NFL draft chances are. Mediocre, at least. He's maybe a third, fourth, even fifth round pick. You and, think and so? I think so, and I'm not sure he'd be drafted as a quarterback. I think if they're going to draft him, he'd be as an athlete, uh, quote unquote, to yeah. be developed later uh, and probably move to a tight end. I think that the anti abortion ad is uh, not really an issue. It was a harmless ad. You know, they, it was very overblown, as you've said before. But at the same time, his draft stock will. It's hurt by the senior bowl performance, but the scouting combine's coming up. And he can definitely you make can, some ground back. He can definitely back. make or break at the combine, although it is just physical intangibles. But uh, Tim Tebow, the player, we'll talk about the player. 8 for 12 in the Senior Bowl, 50 yards, looked like terrible underneath the center, which is, you know, the pro-style offense. Two rushes for five yeah. yards at that. I think, I think Tebow gets drafted in the late first, early second because he's Tim Tebow. Eric Crouch was a first-day pick. Maurice Claret was a first-day pick. Mm -hmm. All the big-name college players get taken, you know, and the Jacksonville Jaguars are in love with him. You know, there's a lot of teams that need a quarterback type player. I think he gets drafted, he sits on the bench, and eventually one day he will be behind center on an NFL team. You really think so? You really think that one day he'll be starting? I do. Well, like, you know, someone gets injured. I mean, even oh, yeah. Brian St. Pierre started an NFL game. Yeah, Kyle Bowler, yeah. good example. <laughs> well, this year. 
College football signing day was just last week, and recruiting, as we know, is extremely important to the success of college programs. So which schools were the biggest winners and losers? Well, the winners are the, the, usually the perennial winners. The USC, um, UCLA had a good class in the Pac-10. Florida. Florida. Miami had a good class in the ACC. Virginia Tech had a good class. The one that I like to look at is Derek Dooley at Tennessee. Really came into to a horrible position. Yeah, no Not a horrible Lane position. Kippen just exactly. Out leaving the team. Three weeks before signing day, and really kept not only kept a lot of recruits, but he added more recruits. And that was probably the most impressive job because he came into such a tough situation. Lane Kiffin just up and leaves for USC, and this guy comes in, not only keeps all the recruits, but gets more than he expected. Mm -hmm. Five five star prospects. Amazing. We'll see. I'm actually my winner is another team that will not have their coach from last season. That's Florida. Urban Meyer, you know, leaving for health reasons, but they had eight, you know, five-star recruits. They had 11 players in the top 10 at their position. Plus, they had the three best defensive linemen in the country, an all-star recruiting class for Florida. Yeah, good for Urban Meyer's club. We have to take a quick commercial break, but we'll be right back in just a few minutes. Stay tuned. You're watching One-on-One -on -one Sports.